on the 27th of February 1973, Naomi Sanders was a 57-year-old divorcee who lived alone in a Vallejo, California apartment as the on-site manager for her complex. She had no children herself, but was one of ten brothers and sisters. In her window was a large cardboard sign with the word open written on it. She often invited apartment hunters in. On this day, she was frying a double portion of steak when suddenly her life was taken. She was assaulted and choked. It was unknown who the extra steak was for, but it was thought it may have been for a pet poodle, Cindy. The police found a partially clothed body the following day, laying on the bed with her dog watching over her the entire time until they took her away. At the time of the offence, the perpetrator left traces of his bodily fluids on Sanders' clothes. Evidence was collected at the scene, but it was unknown who the perpetrator was at the time, and the case remained unsolved for decades. In 2014, the California Department of Justice Laboratory tested the clothing Sanders was wearing at the time. This examination revealed the presence of white staining. Although a DNA profile was developed and entered into CODIS, there were no matches. The DNA profile was continuously run against new people who were uploaded into the database. In 2016, detectives turned to familial DNA, which allowed them to search the California DNA database for people related to the suspect. Again, the results were negative. A couple of years later, detectives started to research genetic genealogy and partnered with Parabon. In April of 2019, a DNA genealogy analysis was completed and eventually narrowed the search. Investigators went to Louisiana in 2019 to collect discarded DNA from one of the leads. The test was able to eliminate him as a suspect, however, the remaining lead turned out to be a man who passed away and his remains had been cremated. Detectives were able to make contact with his son, who lived out of town and collected his DNA and used it to solve a 46-year-old cold case. In late February of 2020, it was confirmed that Robert Dale Edwards, who was 22 years of age at the time, was responsible for the offence. He passed away in Napa County in December of 1993 at the age of 42 from taking large amounts of illicit substances. He previously had convictions of assault, robbery, and also attempted to take another person's life. During the investigation, it was discovered that Sanders may have known Edwards at the time of the offence. His father was Sanders' former co-worker, the woman's nieces were thankful to everyone who worked tirelessly to solve the cold case. Sadly, most of those who knew Sanders have passed away since and will never know the truth. On the 19th of January, 1996, Mary Lynn Grin was a 67-year-old woman who was living alone in the first floor bedroom at an assisted living center for seniors located in Covina, California. At 7.30 that morning, facility staff came in to wake her up to give her breakfast, and to their horror, they discovered her unresponsive body laying there. She had been indecently assaulted and strangled as someone took her life. It was believed that the intruder entered her room through an unlocked sliding glass door and attacked her, leaving her until staff came in to check up on her. Investigators conducted extensive interviews with facility staff, residents, and anyone they believed could have been linked to the facility. Everyone was cleared, and the officer struggled to find a strong suspect based on the leads. And then, the case went cold. Several items of evidence, including DNA collected at the scene, and for Mary's body, was initially ran through state and federal DNA databases. A profile was developed, but it didn't get a match. Later in 2019, detectives ran a familiar DNA search. More than six months after sending the DNA to California's Department of Justice, they got a hit. It was discovered that the suspect's DNA had close ties to a relative who had passed away. This significantly narrowed the search for the offender. Further tests were completed and a match was made, identifying the suspect. It was discovered in July 2020 that the DNA left at the scene to be that of a 46-year-old David Bernal. A warrant for his arrest was issued on the 6th of August 2020. Detectives 
went to a neighborhood in El Monte, where Bernal lived and arrested him the following day. After 24 years, it was Bernal's father's DNA, who is no longer alive, that helped unravel the mystery of Fender. It was unclear whenever Lindgren knew Bernal, or if it was just a random attack. Her children were informed. They were relieved that the case had been solved after so many years of not knowing who took the mother's life, and it provided closure for her family. On the 15th of May 1988, two girls were wandering around the top of a creek embankment when they made a horrifying discovery. They found a lifeless baby boy in a paper bag among the trees in Central Valley, California. The baby was wrapped in a light blue t-shirt depicting a Garfield cartoon. An autopsy revealed the baby was born alive, but later strangled using a ligature instrument. The body was found at least two days after he was born. For three decades, the mother's identity remained a mystery, and the case went cold. Though the investigators received tips about the mother and baby, the information was unsubstantiated. In 2005, the police located a woman's DNA on evidence collected from the crime scene. Investigators believe the DNA belonged to the baby's mother, but they're unable to identify her. Alameda County Police reopened the case in 2019 and collaborated with the FBI and private labs, including Gene by Gene, which owns the genealogy website Family Tree DNA. In March 2020, the genealogy research linked Lisa Lopez as a suspect. In June 2020, investigators began to do surveillance of her and did DNA analysis of a discarded trash that they obtained. After 32 years, the case was finally solved when Lopez's DNA matched the DNA left at the scene. On the 16th of July 2020, a warrant for Lopez's arrest was issued. She was later arrested at her home in Salida on the 23rd of July. Lopez, now 52 years of age, admitted to investigators in July 2020 that she was the mother of the baby. She was 20 years old when the baby was found and she said she hid her pregnancy from family and friends. She was charged with taking a baby's life and remains jailed on a $2 million bail. Lopez's defense team stated that what their client is accused of in no way describes the love and the warmth that Lopez has exhibited since the tragic event. Noting that her only run-in with law enforcement was a speeding ticket she was given 10 years ago. Lisa's life story is one of a nurturing, caring mother to two grown sons, wife for 25 years to her husband, and grandmother to a two-year-old granddaughter.